well, <laughs> the future I'd like to see or the future that we're heading towards, I think there's a huge, huge difference there. Um, the future that I'd like to see is uh, more reliance on local food systems, um, also from our food distributors. So um, basically more thinking into not relying on food being transported into a city only and sort of perhaps looking at more 80% levels of food being produced in cities, maybe 20% levels being trucked in of those things that can't be grown in the city. Um, on the other hand, also, uh, it's naive to think that we can grow all of, our or all of our food in the city when we have issues of growing uh, populations and uh, spreading cities. So. There's different ways. Um, you've got, uh, depends on which city you go into and what kind of soil conditions you have, but you can grow it at uh, ground level, community gardens, allotments, along the side, uh, sidewalks. Uh, there's lots of spaces for food growth. Uh, vertical gardens uh, on walls. So um, looking into architectural infrastructure and the framework in, within the, the buildings already, um, having uh, available spaces to grow food, and of course rooftops. There's many. Um, I think New York City now has just uh, opened up the High Line, which is a wonderful uh, project. I don't know if you've heard yeah. about it, but it's basically in the meat packing district where they've turned an old highway that used to transport meat into the center of the city and was uh, derelict and left over. They've now used that as uh, growing places and walking spaces and pedestrian routes around the city. Um, in the Netherlands, we've been visiting a few projects. Uh, in uh, Den Haag, we've got Gazon de Grund, I might be saying that wrong, which is a fa fantastic permaculture initiative. You've got places in Brussels, uh, community gardens in quite uh, sort of crime-ridden areas of the city where they've actually gotten people to focus on growing food together, which has actually had a huge impact on reducing crime levels in particular neighborhoods. It's a wonderful initiative. Um, and you've got, of course, this whole initiative of the vertical farm uh, by, was started by Dixon Despermier, who's from Columbia University in New York, which has, you know, um, this whole, uh, we should question ideas like that as well, because can skyscrapers be uh, only used for growing food and when uh, land is so valuable inside a city? I think planning. Planning legislation needs to make architects and developers focus on providing local food systems. So um, if you don't have the permits, you can't do it. And also I think uh, architects need to push this envelope of uh, providing these spaces with, within buildings, on, on the walls, at ground level and on rooftop level. Um, so if you provide the infrastructure for that to happen, then residents will, and also you need to plan it into the maintenance of the building in and around it. What kind of needs? Um, well, the need to, uh, of food security in our cities uh, for now and the future. I mean, we have the example of the volcano from Iceland this year, and that was caused weeks of havoc, but I think within the first primary few days, a lot of transport of food into cities stopped, so shelves started to become empty in the markets. And how we deal with if there's another event like that, or th there'll be more events like this in the future with climate change, I think. And um, there's a fact that actually our markets only have about two to three days supply of food if imports were to stop. So how do we mitigate against that? Um, how do we prepare ourselves for something like that? And on the other hand, we have, of course, less and less arable land available, um, either because it's being used for biofuel or because it's begin, the soil has been so degraded to a point where it's no longer possible to be farmed on. Um, and growing urban populations that need to be fed, and how do we deal with that?